Custody is the first feature film by French director Xavier Legrand. It stars Léa Drucker and Denis Ménochet. And it starts off by centering around uh, a custody battle, uh, divorce proceedings between uh, Léa Drucker's character and Denis Ménochet's character. So the film opens directly with the custody hearing and the divorce proceedings. It sort of starts uh, in an office. You have the judge, uh, our two main characters, and on either side, their lawyers. And for about 10-15 minutes, essentially all it is is this sort of naturalistic... A uh, social look at uh, a divorce battle, and you have all the uh, lawyers that come and present their case uh, for their clients, and the judge sort of serves as a surrogate for the spectator to uh, essentially serve as an information dump. That's really what this very long, prolonged scene is. It's about passing off as much of the backstory and as much of the exposition in a way that's actually really smart. Because if you were to do it later with, let's say, a conversation between our two main characters where they're saying, oh, well, you did this and then I did this, uh, and essentially have a, a conversation that would be expository, not for their benefit because obviously they had lived through it, uh, but solely for the purpose of telling the audience what's going on, it really wouldn't work as much. But as is, even though it's, you know, very heavy on the exposition, on the backstory, because of the way it's shot, and because of the way it's framed uh, as this sort of naturalistic, uh, almost documentary style, like it could be straight out of a De Pardon or uh, a Wiseman film, uh, it's really not all that jarring for the spectator and allows us to take in uh, all of, you know, their shitty marriage and also everything that's going to be at stake later on in the film. After that, though, the film progressively morphs from a social drama into more of a thriller, and that tonal shift that is operated throughout the film is really perfectly well handled. Um, and it's made even more impressive by the fact that this is a first-time filmmaker. This is his first feature-length film. And, you know, even veteran directors will have uh, a lot of issues sometimes at mastering these tonal shifts, at shifting from one genre to another. And this really bodes extremely well for the future of Legrand's career. Uh, international audiences may recognize Denis Ménochet as a familiar face. Uh, he was the French farmer in that incredible opening scene in Inglorious Bastards. And, you know, he's just a wonderful casting choice as this big, burly, menacing presence, you know, that is just this incredible physical presence on screen. And that if you look into his eyes, there's really something menacing. There's really this sense of insanity uh, hidden behind there. And opposite him, Léa Drucker is fantastic as well in a very different role. She's clearly physically weaker than her ex-husband, but what she does possess is an incredible amount of emotional resilience and mental fortitude. And those are the two forces that are sort of at war with each other here. The physical force versus the mental force, where you have Denis Ménochet as the physical force, but uh, very weak uh, emotionally and mentally, and the exact opposite, uh, from Léa Drucker's character. And in the middle, you have their son, Julien, who's at the heart of this custody battle, and also grow up really fast because he's seen uh, throughout his childhood this shitty marriage fall apart and uh, is really trying as hard as he can to protect his mother. He's very well cast as well. The director manages to get a really good performance out of him. And with his moppy blonde hair and this sort of cute, innocent face, he really is just uh, a perfect choice to uh, interpret this uh, sort of character. A lot of the scenes, especially those that are uh, with his father, are shot both from his perspective and from his height. So he'll be in frame and they'll be very close up on his uh, innocent little face. And then you'll have his father uh, sort of out of focus in the distance or, you know, sort of half framed where only his arm or part of his face will be in frame. And that really serves to uh, create this sense of his father as a looming, menacing figure, but also as an other. That's that's what he calls his father, actually. He keeps referring to him as l'autre, uh, the other, uh, the other guy, and really doesn't seem to have much love or respect for this dangerous figure. And there's this great scene where um, his father manages to uncover uh, where his ex-wife is living and where his children are living because his, his wife doesn't want him to know because uh, she's afraid that he's going to show up. And of course, because he's a narcissistic, self-absorbed, uh, violent, uh, jealous asshole, of, of course he ends up showing up. And he's uh, that's a big part of 
the first half of the movie is him trying to figure out where they live because he keeps picking up his kid uh, at his grandparents' house. And finally he manages to find out, he manages to figure it out and get the information from his kid. And while they're walking up to the apartment, it's all shot with this uh, tracking shot behind the child, uh, pretty close up so you have the majority of the back of his head covering the frame. And the only presence that you have of the father in this instant is his hand sort of around the child's neck. And it's not violent, it's like he's not squeezing or, or being um, dangerous in any way, but there is something incredibly looming and incredibly menacing. And with just these little touches that uh, the director disperses throughout, you really get a lot of the dynamic and the history uh, of what's been going on with the family. As a first effort, it really is quite a, a remarkable uh, debut from Xavier Le Grand. Uh, everything just feels very true and real, and it's a very uncomfortable film to sit through, and I say this as somebody who, you know, was very lucky not to have to live through any of this. There really is a tangible and a palpable quality to the, to the film, especially like in, in the visuals. Um, whether it be through the shitty cars or the 1970s, 1980s suburban houses with the shitty furniture and the questionable uh, sense of style, uh, the concrete buildings that serve as social housing. Um, yeah, everything in this just felt like the France I knew. It felt like a place that was real, that existed, that people lived in. It felt like a place that I recognized. Uh, it wasn't any of the cushy Parisian apartments that you see in a lot of French films. And the film inherently isn't really about middle class life or, or has anything really political to say about that. But I, what I thought was interesting is just in terms of it trying to be real and trying to be true to life, it, you know, really portrays something that I thought was interesting. Um, the grandparents uh, all have their house and, you know, it's, it's, it's a normal, regular middle class house. It's, it's not huge, but it's not tiny either, and clearly they did okay for themselves, but all their children are living in apartments. The mother is unemployed, she's living off unemployment benefits, and the only apartment she can have is within social housing. Even if it's not trying to say anything, there is just this observation of the impoverishment of the middle class. Uh, that I just thought was interesting and that felt, again, very true and very uh, tangible. It just contributed to this feeling that everything in the film felt true and unfortunately that this was a situation that felt true and unfortunately for a lot of people it's going to feel true. To the point that I would actually hesitate to recommend it to people who uh, have lived through uh, domestic abuse or spousal abuse because I, I'm not sure whether it would be maybe cathartic or therapeutic or whether it would just trigger some you know, awful memories and uh, traumatic memories. It's a great first time effort by the director. It was strange because it also happens to be a sequel. Um, back in 2013, uh, Le Grand made a short film uh, with the same characters, with the same cast, and which was basically about Léa Drucker's character escaping from her husband. And yeah, this serves as a sequel. This serves as exploring that aftermath. Uh, and it was just really strange because I had no idea uh, going into this film, and I had no idea that it was the same director. The movie was awarded the Silver Lion at the Venice Film Festival, and I'm just very, very curious to see what Le Grand does next. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, hit the like button if you liked the video, and if you're not subscribed, uh, please consider doing so. Uh, and until next time, just uh, thanks.